Now, friends, while I was minding my business being nosy, I come across a story that I really think that y'all going to want to know about. Now, be prepared because it's going to send you. Okay. All right. Now, if y'all was on my TikTok friends, y'all saw me talk about this lady by the name of Georgia Tan. I only did three minutes, but I feel like you need more. You guys need more information because, baby, that's not all of it, okay? That was just a big high level, cliff notes. That's what that was, okay? So I want to tell y'all about start to finish how she belong in the deepest depths of hell. Point blank, period, okay? It ain't no getting around. And I often wonder to myself, how are these folks on God's green earth walking around here this evil? How? How can people be like this? Now, what she did did involve the misplacement of kids from their homes, homes into foster homes and adoption agencies. Um, but how she went about it was just out of this world. So y'all stay tuned. Now, Georgia Tan was born in 1891 and she was born in Mississippi. Now, this all them, them the two details that you need right there. That's all you need to know. Mississippi 1891, you already know it's about to be something crazy. All right. 1891, she's born to a judge. Now, this judge knows the law. Daughter born in 1891 in Mississippi. Baby, this is just a recipe for disaster. I'm just going to go and tell you how I feel about it. And people should have seen this coming a mile away. But this is what happened when you know somebody. OK, you don't really have to know anything. But if you know somebody, you can get in where you fit in. It ain't about what you know. It's about who you know. So her dad was a judge. She wanted to be a lawyer. The judge said there's no room for that for women. OK, at that time, there were no women's rights and she couldn't do what she wanted to do. So she went on to college for music, graduates for music, gets a job in Texas as a social worker. How them two? How that add up? That's what I just, I feel like how that, uh, it ain't like it's 2024 where you go to school, you don't, you don't get a job doing what you're supposed to do from what school because you got so many options. This is 1891. Ain't but so much you could do, especially as a woman, but she became a social worker. And it irritates my soul that when you Google this woman, she's listed as an American social worker as if she was somebody that, uh, baby, her name need to be next. Her picture need to be next to Lucifer in the dictionary. Okay. Um, but she became a social worker in Texas and literally got fired after a year, after a year, y'all of working, she got fired. You know why she got fired? I bet y'all know. I guess y'all, I, I think y'all can guess it because my friends, y'all be on point over here. She got fired because she was misplacing children out of, out of the home. She was taking kids out of the home, putting them up for adoption, foster care with no grounds to do so. So once they saw that, they were like, girl, bye. <laughs> Get on out of here. Bye, girl. Because y'all know Texas was a little different because Texas was its own country at one point. I know That's a whole other thing. I don't include Texas in the Mississippi. Now, I'm not saying they ain't had no stuff going on, but it was a lot of tug of war between Texas and Mexico. And then Texas became its own country. Then it became a state. So I'm not going to wrap them up in what the 13 colonies was doing. OK, um, but in Texas, they told her she had to go. We ain't doing it over here. So before she left, she took one of the employees. You want to know why she didn't want employees? Because she hadn't got in a relationship with one of the girls out there, okay? The girls, the girl was about eight years younger than her. I'm gonna put a picture of her up here, or at least her name. I'm gonna try to find a picture because I'm I'm drawing a blank. Can't think of her name right now. It's like Annette, Jackie, something like that. I don't know. I don't know. It don't matter. She got in a relationship with this girl who had just had a baby out of wedlock. The girl was eight years younger than her. She adopted a child, meaning Georgia. She adopted a child. And then she helped to raise this girl from the office. She helped to raise her child. She took the girl and the two kids to Tennessee, where she began social work in Tennessee. Now, back then, it won't no Internet. So it won't like, you know, you could lie. You could say, hey, I, I work for the president of the United States. You could say whatever you want to say. Ain't nobody going to be able to call and verify. If they do, you know, send a little letter somewhere. You can intercept it, send it back, put a little stamp up there. It's so easy to get away with stuff back then because... It was an electronic verification. Okay. Um, just, just 20 years ago, you can get a credit card, no problem, in the mail, not even yours. Like, I don't know about it because I won't grown, but still. Um, so she goes and be, she becomes a social worker at the Tennessee Children's Society home, right? Now, I don't know why people are like this. She gets into this home. Now, at the time, there was no charge for adoption, unless. 
you were doing private adoptions. But let me explain it. There was a seven dollar fee associated with adoptions. That's just for like research and whatever they got might have to do. But the way at the time the government set it up was that they did not want people to try and come in and outbid someone for an adoption. They wanted those kids to go to the right homes. Right. They wanted them to have a love and have a genuine home that they belonged in versus someone buying buying them. OK, so they only charge about seven dollars, which 1891, well, not 1891, 1920. That's still a lot of money. It's not a lot, a lot, but seven dollars is enough. Um, So what Georgia did is she got in there and did like a hostile takeover, baby. She got straight to the top immediately, just conniving, gets in there and she starts arranging out of state private adoptions. That way she can charge hundreds to thousands of dollars for this. To pay for like travel, to pay for hotel stay, whatever it is that she claimed she was paying for. But that wasn't what was going on at all. I'm going to tell y'all what was going on. Now, once she gets to Tennessee and she has like this hostile takeover, she starts doing the absolute most to get kids into this pretty much foster home, foster care. She would go into neighborhoods. Mm hmm. See kids outside playing. They see her older lady, Pearl's curl set, driving a, a Cadillac or a shiny car or whatever. I don't even think it was a Cadillac. Don't let me lie to y'all. But a shiny black car. This is, what, this is what the article say. And they would be comfortable to come up to her. And she'd be like, you want to ride in my car? And they would say, yeah. And she would take them. Gone. Hospitals. She was working with hospital nurses in Tennessee, the general hospital, so that when widowed women came in and gave birth or unwed women came in and gave birth or one would consider an addict came in and gave birth, she would have the nurses to tell the mothers that the child didn't make it. Didn't make it. Sorry. No, you can't see the baby. Whole time, she done took the baby. She done took the baby. Now, let me tell y'all this too. The people that were adopting the kids had no idea that this is what this woman was doing. No idea because she was just, she was nice. Kind. You wouldn't think that the devil wear pearls and the press curl and all of that, you know, but let me tell you, it gets it gets even worse, y'all. So she's a she's having these kids up for adoption, right? Taking them out of their homes, sometimes telling the parents, hey, just get yourself together. We're going to put the kids in foster care for a little while to get yourself together. You come back and get them. Then when the parents would come back to get the kids, she would be like, we ain't got no record of having your kids. I don't know what you're talking about. Can you imagine how many women probably went insane or got put into an asylum or something just because of stuff that she did? Could you imagine? Woo! If... I'd be like, Jesus, let me step out real quick in the hallway because I got somebody I need to. That's how I feel. Um, so the parents that the prospect prospect parents that were adopting these children, babies, had no idea that this is what she was doing. So most of the time she was adopting, having the adoptions happen in California or New York to prominent, famous people, rich people, including Ric Flair parents. Ric Flair was one of those babies that she stole. Mm -hmm. um, another one was Joan Crawford. Y'all know Mommy Dearest, Joan Crawford, her twins that she adopted, not Cindy, but the twins, Kathy and another name. I can't think of the girl name. They were also stolen babies that Georgia just decided to just sell. Now, these adoptions was running about five thousand dollars. And if a parent asked about where did these babies come from? Where where is the birth certificate? She would threaten them with her little friend. Now, her little friend, y'all, was a judge, Judge Kelly. She would reach out to them parents and tell them, stop asking questions. If you think it's illegal, guess what? If Georgia go down, you're going down too. She would blackmail them into not saying anything or asking any questions. And sometimes if the parents ask too many questions, they would go back and take the child from the adoptive parent just because they want to know what a birth certificate is. Now, what's crazy about this, y'all, is that she was not working alone. She had a judge on her side. Not only did she have a judge on her side, she had the ex-mayor. Of Tennessee on her side, this guy named E. H. Boss Crump. He, they look, they somebody pointed out on TikTok that they look like the same person. One just got glasses and a wig on, D disheveled, just terrible, horrible. So he was working with her to help cover up her tracks and store money and like offshore accounts and things like that, and explaining to the government. Now she's getting all this money from adoption agencies, and the government is paying this particular agency sixty five thousand dollars a year. OK, that's outrageous. Well, OK, wait, 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 let me let me confirm this. Let me confirm, friends, because it could be that the government was given sixty five thousand dollars to um, child care for like 
uh, foster care and stuff like that. And 30% of it was going to that agency in Tennessee. That's crazy. So she was living big, large and in charge. Um, so afterwards, she got a governor from New York in 1935 to adopt a child from her. And you know what's odd about that? He also signed a bill into law saying the adoption birth certificate should be sealed. Now, why would he do that? Why would he do that? Hmm. Interesting. I'm going to tell y'all what I think, what I think about it. But I also want to let y'all know that she didn't just adopt to parents that was rich and famous or could pull strings for her. She also adopted to men who wanted little children around. She adopted to creeps. She didn't care who it was. She adopted to people who only wanted to buy children to put them to work on farms. Now, this is when you get child labor laws that come into play because this is crazy. I'm telling y'all everything that I know now. I'm telling y'all what I'm reading now to put them kids to work. So this is why there's such a negative connotation associated around adoption and um, foster care and evil step parents and adoption. You know, all this stuff. This is why. So all of this happens. And then the governor at the time of Tennessee launches an investigation. Now, they said that this woman was responsible for the taking and adopting out over 5,000 kids. Not only that, they say at least 500 children went on to glory in her care because she would hire addicts or unfit people off the streets to care for them in these foster homes. And when the kids would get sick and all the things like that, she would not get no doctors for them. She wouldn't spend no money on none of that. She would just let it go, let it be. That is outrageous. Now, you probably would say, well, how much time did she do? Like, she had to be locked under the jail once they find out. Well, the governor at the time in Tennessee decided to launch an investigation. His name was Gordon Browning. He doing an investigation. They uncovering stuff. Guess what happens? Miss Georgia Tan here, she ends up going away from the big C of the uterine. When I say big C, I know what that is. Of the uterine or the uterus. Uterine C is what she passed from having never had her own child, having never been married, having done all of this to these other kids. That's what her ultimate demise was. The judge, Shelly, Kelly, whatever her name, we don't even, I don't even care. She ended up going away as well, like a year after that. And E.H. Crump, he ended up going away. So guess who got charged in all of this? Absolutely no one. In 1950, when all this came to a head, Three days before the press conference of them releasing what information they had found out, Georgia passed. Ooh, that made me hot. So afterwards, the state ended up suing her estate, but she only had an $82,000 estate, which is not bad for uh, 1950, but $82,000, and they got like two-thirds of the estates. But those kids, what about their reuniting with the families? Well, in 1990, some of the kids who were probably, of sure, adults by then were reunited with their families. But for a lot of them, they did not go back with their families. They never knew, never knew what happened. None of that. So I say all this to say, y'all, history is crazy. This Georgia Tan story, I'm sure right now, she somebody says she's shoveling coals to keep hell hot. And she is eating a porcupine sandwich with a little bit of ghost reaper, uh, ghost pepper, Carolina reaper peppers up there. Sprinkle with poop. Like, I'm I'm literally thinking about this. Like, girl, you the audacity. I can't believe it. Anyway, friends, that is the story time for today. If y'all want to hear more stories like this, please draw down in the comment section. Let me know. Please, 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 friends, please like my video. <laughs> please share my video. Please subscribe to my channel. Please. Um, and let me know what you think about this. Even if you don't agree, if you agree, if you want to argue with me, if you want to give me some more details, if you want to give me another story time, please let me know because y'all know we friends. I'm here for you and you here for me. And when we bored, we just talk to each other. Okay, friends, if y'all like this, like the video. And I hope I ain't got y'all up in too much of a tizzy and I'm gonna call y'all back later on. Bye.